the Monday, April 15th, 2024 meeting of the Woodbridge Police Commission. It is now 6-16. Um, first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from March 18th. Um, I think I'm, let's see, I think maybe the only one who, no, I was here. Everybody was here. here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So everyone's eligible for vote. I'm going to move them. Um, is there a second? Second. Are there any corrections to the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is our executive session. Um, do you want to do these out of order, or do you want to just go in this order? I'm going to say it because we're going to... We can go in this order if you like. Okay. So a return from executive session is now... 8.46, we were in executive session for about 20 minutes. Um, I should have asked for a vote to move into executive session. 6.46. I'm sorry, what did I say, 8.46? Mm -hmm. oh, 6.46. Um, <laughs> before we went to executive session, I should have asked for a vote to go into executive session. I understand that it was uh, Commissioner's Esposito intention to to move into executive session. Was that yes, still that's correct. Okay. Um, there was nothing voted upon during our executive session, um, and the... Um, internal affairs investigations um, dealt with three officers. They were each invited to attend tonight. They opted not to attend. Um, and the issue regarding hiring was placed in executive session due to the safety and security of both the town residents and the officers. Um, next on our agenda is public comments and correspondence. Is there anyone from the public that expressed an interest in appearing? There's not. Is there any correspondence you received that we need to deal with? No. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the financial report. This is a financial report. Uh, we're at nine months, so we're three quarters of the way through the fiscal year. And as of last week, we remain right on track. I believe it's approximately 73% of our budget thus far. You know, and as it's been for the entire, this entire fiscal year, due to multiple vacancies and extended absences, our, that police overtime line remains significantly over budget as I referenced at our last meeting. Uh, however, three of those vacancies have been recently filled and um, funding in that line should begin to level off as long as we don't lose any other officers you know, in the meantime. So it all correlates with manpower and staffing the more people that we have available to us and uh, not on injured, the less overtime we should have. But other than that, everything is uh, pretty much on track, like I said, at 73%. Has any questions? Is there a motion to approve financial report? Make a motion to approve the financial report. Thank second. you. There's a second. All those in favor? Aye. I carry unanimously. Comments? Um, motion. Next item on our agenda is the activity report. And the criminal activity report amongst the incidents uh, listed in your monthly statistic report for last month, uh, officers, officers responded to uh, two assaults uh, during the past month. One involved a physical fight between uh, two subjects down in the parking lot on U69 at a local business, resulting in an arrest. And at the end of the month, on the 28th, they responded to a report of a fight involving three subjects. Uh, that had become involved in a verbal dispute uh, and that escalated into a physical altercation that was up on uh, Millwood Road off of Peck Hill out in the street and that incident remains under investigation. Two of the people fled uh, from there, so that remains under investigation. We had one burglary last month and that was a residential burglary of uh, a home being renovated on Woodfield Road occurred in the nighttime hours around 9 p.m. Uh, subjects were going prior to police arrival and that is currently under investigation by the investigative services unit. They responded to four family disputes throughout the month, one involved violence that resulted in arrest. Uh, on the 23rd, they responded at uh, 1, 1.15 in the morning to another local business for a fight that had occurred down there. Uh, upon arrival, both parties involved refused to speak to the police and uh, give any details and they left without, without further incident. Did three different larceny investigations. Uh, one 
was about the theft of some electronics from the local school. The other one about a uh, firearm reported missing from the residence after the homeowner had invited guests to the house. And that uh, was turned over to the detective bureau and was being followed up by them. I'll comment on that um, a little bit further sh uh, very shortly. Is and, there, does that yep. raise an issue with, <clears throat> aren't there laws that you have to properly secure firearms? Yeah, there are, but uh, to prevent someone of underage oh. getting them, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then on the 31st, uh, there was an attempted theft of a motor vehicle at a Hamity Road business that occurred while the employee was working throughout the day into the evening. We had, throughout the month, we had uh, six different incidents of uh, larceny from motor vehicles. Uh, they occurred on two different days. Uh, the first ones occurred on March 16th, there were four, three of, them, three of the four occurred at the community gardens, uh, dog park, parking area over there on the Fitzgerald property. Uh, those were during the day, it was like mid-afternoon around 1.15. Um, and then another one occurred shortly after that on Reesebrook Road down near the Orange Line. ISU was following up on that, I think it was a credit card used from one or two of those that they were following up on. And then on uh, the end of the month, March 26th, in the early morning hours, there were a couple of uh, cars going through up in Forest Glen, South East Drive area. Both of responded to seven mental health issues. Uh, they had one report of a sexual assault that came in that um, ISU investigated in conjunction with uh, the state DCF uh, and about someone in foster care uh, that ended up being um, an incident that was unfounded and the victim recanted on that. And we had two stolen vehicles. Uh, one was on the first of the month and that was taken from a residence uh, on Amity Road at about 1.45 in the afternoon. It was recovered two days later in New Britain. And then uh, in the early morning hours of March 26th, uh, a vehicle was stolen out of a driveway on Grouse Lane, off of North Reeshwood, and that was recovered a short time later in Orange, on occupied on Route 34. Some of the criminal arrests made by our, our men over the uh, past month uh, included a juvenile, 14 year old juvenile from New Haven, uh, was arrested on a warrant and uh, stems from two separate incidents in uh, 2024, no, January of 2024, beginning of this year. From, uh, thefts from vehicles parked in local business parking lots. On the 28th, they served an arrest warrant on a female who was in custody uh, in New Haven on an unrelated, unrelated incident. And uh, that would have to do with uh, evading responsibility when uh, that person was found to be at fault from a motor vehicle accident right from the scene prior to the police arrival. Another arrest involving a uh, dispute that occurred at a residence involving threatening and uh, breaching the peace. And the last uh, arrest had to, another evading responsibility arrest. The uh, subject out of Brooklyn, New York, uh, turned himself in to work his own arrest warrant uh, in regards to a February 2024 accident where he also had fled the scene. And as far as the investigative services unit, they assumed eight new cases during the month of March, including that residential burglary of sexual assault that I mentioned and that theft of the firearm um, from the residents. And so they were worked with New Haven and um, the Connecticut Division of Parole and led uh, them to a location in New Haven and recovered another uh, stolen firearm and some uh, narcotics. And also they've identified a sub, sub suspect uh, responsible for an attempted burglary that occurred on Amity Road at the end of last year, in December of 2023. An arrest warrant associated with that is forthcoming and they conducted six public fingerprinting requests and performed processing and background investigations for four pistol permit applicants. And the, uh, traffic and motor vehicle, the deputy chief will elaborate on that. During the month of uh, March, our officers made 105 traffic stops, which was a 25% increase from our January and February numbers. Officers conducted uh, radar and speed enforcement on 405 occasions during the month. 
and deterrent traffic safety patrols another 409 times. We had 16 motor vehicle accidents during March, which is a 38% decrease from February. Our speed trailer, we put it at Seymour Road, Center Road, Johnson Road, and Beecher Road throughout the month. Was the decrease um, <clears throat> due to the weather's warmer, less ice? What, why are we having fewer accidents? I think know? some some of it's attributed to our uh, speed enforcement efforts. We're putting a lot of officers in locations where we've been having a number of motor vehicle accidents. In the Amity Road, Seymour Road areas, there's specific areas that um, have more accidents than others. I see the cars. Yeah, I see them. I didn't have a luxury of having them there before. I don't know a few people you met. And I want three new officers on the road. It helps. Absolutely. The bottom of the report under T. Robinson. Um, it has 16 written warnings and 17 total stops. Who is that attributed to? I think that's an error on the records clerk. I have to check with her. I just noticed it, too. I'm going to ask her about it. Because the numbers don't add up. Right. With that. Yeah. I'm going to check with her. Um. Sort of reluctant to ask to vote on it without with having that in there. Um, I guess we could table that till next month. Um, next item is the uh, report of the chief. So, an update our dispatch renovation project. Uh, probably saw as you were coming in, hopefully. The renovation of our dispatch center is near its final completion. At the beginning of the month, on April 2nd, we moved our communications operations uh, back up into the front of the building. They had been down here for the last couple months. That's why we um, weren't able to meet here. But now they're up in front and uh, fully functional in the remodeled area. We've been awaiting the delivery of a new window, ballistic window, and the installation of a new door for the glass door in the hallway. And we just notified this morning that that's in. And uh, the plan is to install both of those tomorrow. So we're just waiting on uh, some carpeting that has to be finished. Uh, and hopefully that will be soon to follow. So big improvement up there, and uh, the dispatchers are very happy with it. And uh, glad to be back up there. And nice clean remodeling area in the kitchen. Looks the nice. kitchenette in the back's been fixed up. The sink's been put in. Back here in a while or something. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, big uh, big improvement from where they were. So. Next thing I have was the South Central Chiefs of Police Mutual Aid Compact that we talked about last month. Um, it had been recently revised pursuant to legislation associated with the Public Act 2311. Last month that was tabled with um, some concerns that were expressed by Chairman Burke about the document so that we could um, refer those to the town attorney. Um, those concerns have since been shared and uh, addressed by the town council. So I request that the approval of the board as our governing body uh, of the revised documents so I can sign off on that and send it in. Now, Rob, if you have anything you want to share, maybe. Briefly, um, my concern was the town's liability for um, another department's officer's negligence or error. Um, and unlike many municipalities that are self-insured, we have insurance. So our insurance carrier would cover that. So it's not an issue of the, the taxpayers fronting the bill for an issue right. like that. Um, so I spoke with the town council, and I also spoke with the town council's colleague who handles a lot of police misconduct mm -hmm. um, cases, and they were okay with it. So. Yeah, he, he followed up with me too, uh, so that was good. I'm satisfied with baseball. yeah. I'm satisfied with their okay, good response. Thing, so uh, I would encourage us to vote and, and approve it. Um, is anyone willing to make a motion to approve the mutual aid compact? I'll make a motion. Keep the meeting moving here. I'll second it. So there's a motion, there's a second. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That also carries unanimously. Thank Our you. next item, uh, just drop a back. 
Yeah, the drug take back. Just want to make you aware that on um, April 27th, at the end of the month, in conjunction with Earth Day event that's being held at the town center out here on the town green, we'll be partnering again with the Drug Enforcement Agency and the Bethany Orange Woodbridge Drug Alcohol Action Committee, as we've done in the past, for another nationwide drug take back event. Our collection site will be staffed from 10.30 in the morning to 1.30 in the afternoon, following which time the unwanted pharmaceuticals that are collected will be turned over to the DEA for proper disposal again. And that's all I have for the Chief's report. So a motion to approve the Chief's report. I, just, I had a question about the drug take back. We do that how often? Uh, a couple times a year. We did it uh, two months ago as well. We had a, we had a huge success. The, the constraints against doing it more often are that the DA, you have to get the, somebody's got to guard the medications coming in? Yeah, the, 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 what, what we're, we collected uh, 365 days, so we have the box out in front anyway, so people are always able to do that. But this publicizes more and makes it more pronounced that people will come. But it helps us um, also, there's a big cost associated with the um, disposal fee yeah. that we, that we um, budget for and, and use. And um, on these instances, the DEA will take everything that sees and they'll cover the cost of disposal of it. So it really works out well. Mm -hmm. So the more times they do it, to our benefit, to everybody's benefit, really. Kind of win-win. I'll move the Chief's report. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Carries unanimously. Uh, Next item is our personnel matters. The yeah, other personnel matters. Um, so on April 4th, I received the official written notification from Officer Matthew Iannucci of his resignation from the department that will become effective um, on April 19th as he pursues, pursues a new civilian position in another agency. I thank him for his service to our department over the past 10 years and wish him well in his new, in, his new endeavor. So I just want to make the board aware of uh, that resignation. And with that, it leads me into hiring. So last month, hiring of a new recruit candidate finally got, got us back up to um, back up to where we should be at a budget of strength of 23 sworn um, once she graduates the academy. Um, however, now the departure of Officer Iannucci leaves us with, with one vacancy again uh, that needs to be filled. So currently, we'll be without our new recruit until her graduation from the police academy. Uh, she starts in July, and her graduation is slated for January of 2025. And then that's followed uh, by field training process for a few months after that. Um, and we also have two officers, uh, or two of our personnel, a sergeant and officer out on extended workers' comp-related entries, and uh, who's returned to work they still remain uncertain. So now with the vacancy created by Officer Iannucci's department, we're really working, trying to get the job done right now with the staff of 19, 19 bodies. Um, so I feel it's imperative that um, I get this vacancy filled without any delay and I seek the board's approval to move forward with the hiring process for that. So I need a motion for that if you so, so approve. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, my question is, are you looking to replace an officer, or are you looking to replace an IT guy? We're looking to replace an officer. And this guy spent 90% of his time doing IT. Right, but he's still, still an officer for, for the department that we use for investigations and all the other purposes. And with all due respect, I mean, we, we went from 23 to... I hear you, Frank. From 26 to 23, 22, it's like... Professional manpower study said we should be at 26. We're at, I don't want to get down to 22. I don't what's, the st what's the uh, the status of the two up that are on uh, workman's comp? When are they expecting back? What it's no, no idea. It's up to the have no doctor. idea? What the you take it uh, month by month, whatever the doctor month by month. Yeah, they, they can't give us a, well, I wish we knew. Then we could anticipate. But we don't know. They're progressing, but um, you know, one's been lengthy and one's been One's been since December, and one's one's been uh, you know, since I think, last March. That's out of my hand. It's all up to the you know, cop and the doctors. <clears throat> we'll 
Will Tony fund an IT person for the department? He, he can't say definitely. He would need you know the support of the board and the support of uh, you know, I guess probably the second one. But he said that uh, a part time IT person he felt would be definitely easier to fund than a full time position. I'll tell you what's going to be a lot easier to fund them than it is to find them. Right. But who does IT for the town? They don't have. They have, they have they don't, we don't have an IT person. But I think we have a couple that we still contract to. Yeah. The, you know, that was if we did have a nice person, how we could just call them up and they could come over and help. Yeah. But we have an outside well, contractor who will do it. Yeah. You know, it's not usually done that way. But. Yeah, we can do that. Well, there's two issues. One funding an IT guy, and then another is funding and replacing an officer. So we have two issues. And, you know, and I think you're absolutely right. We could probably do both. And just tell them that we're going to have to fund an IT guy. I'm concerned about if you have a crash, you have a problem here. You know, that affects the security of the town, it affects the security of 10,000 people. Right. And we're just fortunate that we, we had somebody that had the expertise, right. which is kind of unusual, but... Well, one idea is if we decide to uh, vote to fund a full-time IT person, well, that's one idea. One idea. Well, one idea. I mean, the, another idea is deciding whether we deal with right. you know another officer. But what if we chose to do that tonight? One that IT person. One that IT person. person. Uh, well, they may not be exclusive, but at least for right now, to fill the position as a full-time IT person doesn't necessarily say that we're you know precluding the idea of filling an yeah, I mean, officer I, at some point. I'm but I mean, if that's an immediate need, it sounds like it is right now. If but I also not, think stopping the road and, and safety-wise, having 22 people is... But based upon what Commissioner Esposito said, I mean, if 90% of his time was spent doing IT, and that's a loss right now. I think it was 80%, just... Oh. Do we say yeah, he, spent, he spent the large portion of his time doing IT, but, I mean, I think we could get the job done with a part-time person and a full-time officer. Well, how's that possible that it took him most of his time to do it? Because we'll try to re reassess and readjust some of the things. I, I, I just don't, I don't know, yeah, I'm not I'm a proponent of reducing the department down to 22. I understand what you're saying. I'm absolutely against I understand. That. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, I also understand how important IT is to your department. Right. And, uh, you know, you got left on lurch here. I mean, yeah. not, even, not even two weeks' notice. Probably should have been more like 30 to 90 day notice. For you to be able to make a transition of some, um. if I could say something, I, you know, I think it's it's more imperative that we have the police officer. I know I understand IT is obviously a very um, important function, and we need somebody to do IT. Um, although he was doing eighty percent IT work, he still was available to do other patrol functions. And right now, with his absence. If we were to have a major incident, a major felony, we have one person right now to really do a bulk of the detective work. We have a sergeant and one person. We always could utilize him to do those other things that we needed done. You know, and then some months we needed him to do more police work than IT work. However, overall, you know, he focused a lot on IT because we really needed that IT work done. But we could have easily found patrol work, detective work for him to do because we have been short staffed. And right now with his vacancy, we already have bare bones minimum in patrol and we have only one person in the detective division. So in a, a, a best case scenario for us, or a scenario that would work for us is to give us that extra officer to keep us at the 23 and even a part time person to see how that would function to see if we could, uh, you know, make it throw. Because in most departments, they, they, have, they have an outside person do that work. They have their department, and there's a, a town person that spends a bulk of their time at the police department. Right. We that, don't have that. I, I understand. So we, we were fortunate enough to have a person that knew some things, but he was taking away from the patrol work or the detective work that we desperately needed here. It just seems like we have other officers that could step in 
we don't have that many felony cases. Um, so the chance of having a felony case versus the IT need, which is now and immediate, that's, that's why I'm lost on that. Well, let me kind of ask a question. Yeah. You know, you've talked to Tony. Mm -hmm. now, he, he's using outside consulting services, IT services. The, are the IT services he's using have any expertise in, in police work that we can hire them to come in and assist you? That's what they're trying to assess now, but some of the things they said that they, they won't get involved, like body cameras and evidence and things of that sort. They thought they won't get involved in that, for, for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, if we're going to move for an officer, and I understand your position there, and I, I really support that, okay, and we have supported that. I'll tell you what, though, I want, I want the town to fund a part-time IT person for us. I don't want Tony to fund it. And I don't care where the hell they have to go to find the money, they go find it. You know, they could fund everything else in town, let them fund this. This is very important. So, Dan, I would move for your officer but they also will move that we have to fund a part-time IT person. We have to get IT support. We need IT support. You can't run without it. I appreciate that. That's kind of what we're looking for. In that direction. Do um, you have a problem with that? Um, no, but I think the IT has to be done first. Well, and that should be the priority. Well, I. Well, we don't have any support with IT at all right now. And there are other officers that can step in the immediate future to, but, at the chance of it. And it just to bring it to your attention, there's another issue that, are, that, are, that arises with that that um, Right now, we have, for, the, for years now, since Sergeant Thomas did it, um, then, and then Detective Ayanichi did it, the, all the IT work was being done by the union. So it became, pretty much became a union job. And taking that totally away, um, that's going to be something that we'll have to be negotiated with the union because it's um, falls under what? subcontracting, illegal well, subcontracting. Well, it's a union job. Because it's because a union because they, given that task. Because the town doesn't have somebody. So the, town, the police work. department's been doing okay. it for the last right. 20 years. It just I sounds like there are a couple of things we have to sort out oh. before we act on this. Yeah, I think we're going to have to. I mean, I, we have a few things we have to work out before uh, I'm prepared to make that motion. And uh, I agree with uh, what's around that. The IT is very important. Now we have to find out how we're going to work that out. Now if you take a union position, and we're saying is we have to hire a police officer that has IT experience. No, I'm just saying we have to, before we just, you can't just give it away. We have to we can't see hire a part IT person and a cop. Because the union will object. To that. Yeah, I mean the police, the police department, law enforcement somehow is going to have to be involved in IT anyway. Yeah. So it's not a total. I don't think they would. They, they, that's a good point that you brought up. I don't think the union would accept having a part-time IT person because we're taking a position away from an officer but just based on their yeah. prior yeah, that's interactions. Always, that's always, they, that's always been they, they've so done that in the past. Either way, so. we still have to function to move forward. So we really have both. Covering yeah. patrol and covering uh, IT. So well, way, I will. I will talk to Tony before our next meeting and and, and try and sort that out. So shall we table the discussion? Yeah. Thank you. Please put it on the next. Can you separate that on the next? Because they're two different topics. Okay. Right, thanks. Um, our next item of the budget matters: the meeting dates. Oh, um, oh just an update on, um, on the person. Just uh, update on extended absences. So currently we have two employees who I referenced who are, uh, as reported last month, they remain out on extended absences. Um, so one's out on extended work-related injury. He was cleared. He's back performing light duty, uh, pending further doctor evaluation. And the other is remains out on workman's cop-related injury uh, for injury that started in November of 2023. And his return to date at this point also remains uncertain. So that's where we're at with those two. Just uh, ongoing updates with those. And under uh, budget, the only thing I just want to bring to your attention as a reminder is that the preliminary budget hearing is slated for Thursday, April 25th. 
at 7.30 p.m. At the center, in the center gymnasium. And after that, the annual town meeting is Monday, May 20th at 7.30 p.m. Uh, I believe that's going to be at the high school. What's the date again? Uh, the preliminary budget hearing is Thursday the 25th of April at 7.30. And the annual town meeting is May 20th at 7.30. Have there been any changes made to the, the final presentation of our budget? No, not that. No. We yeah. haven't. Yeah, no, there are no, for no, no, no changes there. were requested. No, not since what uh, the board is like, man, kind of that, yeah. Since then. Nothing okay. Nothing major. And like, the next item is the schedule of the May meeting. Yeah, because that com the May meeting conflicts with the uh, annual town meeting. They're both the same night. Bad idea. So have to reschedule. Right, that's not good. Yeah. Um, what's the date we currently have? We're at the twentieth would be the would have been our meeting. Okay. Um, so. Is, are you, would everybody be available the thirteenth, the week before? Because the following week is Memorial Day. But May. 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 Yeah. So May thirteenth. Let's see. I could do that. Yeah, I'm good. You can do that. I'm a baby for that. Hmm? I'm a baby. So I'm going to do the 13th, right? Okay. Yeah, for now we'll try. We'll try for that. Okay. Um, so motion to adjourn the police commission meeting. Make a motion. Thank you. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Moving right along. Welcome to the Woodward Traffic Authority. It is 717. First item on our agenda public comments and correspondence. No. Is there anything? There's nothing. Anyone? No. Okay. Uh, next item traffic. Yeah, the first Fun run. Yeah. First one is the uh, Request from the JCC for the 13th annual Murray Lender 5K Bagel Run to be held on Sunday, September 15th at 9.30. Should last about an hour. They use the regular route. They line up at the uh, JCC property. They exit out to Shady Lane, uh, run down Pease Road to Rimmon, turn around and come back the same route. And as usual, the PD will partner with the JCC to ensure a harmony with the neighbors and. Um, Safety for the for the runners, and so I present that to the legal traffic authority for your uh, consideration and approval. Motion to approve the run. Moved. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, the next thing is the annual Woodbridge Road Race. The Woodbridge Recreation Department will be holding its 42nd annual Woodbridge Road Race on. Saturday, October 5th, from approximately 8 in the morning till 12 noon. We'll be using the customary route from um, in front of the library up Newton Road, Burnt Swamp, South on Yamity, uh, North Pease to Rice Road to Center Road back to the center of town. They always have a well staffed and well marked, and we'll dedicate police personnel to assist at the main intersections. And the Recreation Department is seeking the legal traffic authority's approval to hold the race. And if that's Granted by the LTA, um, that will enable them to move forward and get the state uh, DLT public highway use permit. Do you gentlemen have any issues with that approval? No, we've got a. Or any conditions? No. Okay. So so we're fine. Is there a second? Second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Carries unanimously. And then on Saturday, May 4th, uh, the Bethwood Baseball League will be planning to hold its annual opening day ceremonies on town. Center Green here. Uh, their schedule is to start setting up around 8 a.m. and to be, to be cleaned up and concluded by approximately 1 in the afternoon. They customary close off meeting house lane for pedestrian safety from Center Road to the end area of the library. During that time, they're seeking to do the same this year. Uh, so we just need the legal traffic authority permission for that. Traffic authority is busy, so is there a motion to approve the Bethlehem baseball event? And road closure. I'll, I'll move it. Thank you. Second. 
Two seconds. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Carries unanimously. And our last item for the evening. Yep. Uh, the Route 15, uh, I mean Route 114 Center Road speed limit modification. So last month I shared with you that um, I would reached out to the Office of the State Traffic Administration and asked that they conduct a speed limit review of Center Road to determine if the long-standing 40 mile per hour speed limit throughout the Center of Holland was appropriate. I uh, just notified uh, recently that upon the review of the area and some information that we shared regarding crashes and speed and so forth, uh, the OSTA felt that a modification of the speed limit on a portion of uh, Center Road that passes to right through the town center here was warranted. So as a result of reducing the speed limit on Center Road from just east of Ledge Road to Beecher Road, uh, that section there is like point five four of a mile, just a little bit over half a mile. Um, to be reducing it from 40 to 35 mile per hour uh, in that area. And because it's a state highway, the Connecticut DOT will take care of all the signage and so forth. So there's nothing really for us to do. We just want to make you aware of that. Thank you. And when does that start? They cleared from Beecher Road along the field, they cleared it all out. So now when you pull out, you can see. Right? You can you can see. see. Yeah. Are they going to keep it like that? I imagine, yeah, I hope so. The park, the does our park, park, the park do that? Or does the Pope, state do that? Uh, I think the public, I'm not sure, I think the public works do that. Yeah. Makes a huge yeah. difference when you pull out of Beach Road. You can see, you can see oncoming cars now, whereas before you could look, pull out, and next thing you know, you got a car sitting on your rear end. Yeah, no, that, that, that really uh, increased the line of sight. Yeah, so. Okay. When, what dates does that speed change become effective? Uh, they, they sent it to their region three construction office and asked them to put it on the schedule, but uh, they, don't, they don't give them an exact date. But it's in the works and it's yeah. being done. Too. But, <laughs> but it was fine. You take my balls. Is there a it's motion to there. adjourn? Oh, I, I'll be, make, be happy to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. All those in favor? Right. I'll put you